everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every week to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm showing how to make a drawstring project bag. I know a lot of people like to take crafting type projects like knitting or embroidery with them when they go to places such as sporting events or appointments or anything like that. So the bag I'm going to show how to make today is perfect for that sort of thing. I've actually been wanting to make this bag for quite some time and now that I've made it I want to make so many more of them because I love it so much. To make your bag you will need to pick out some fabrics. I used two for mine but you can definitely use three or even four if you want. Um, the bag outer fabric needs to be something that is sturdy. So think of maybe an upholstery fabric or like a denim weight fabric because you want the material to have some structure and to be kind of able to support the bag kind of stand up on its own um, and this is what gives the bag that really great shape that is perfect for carrying those different projects. Now for the rest of the fabrics you can use just basic cotton fabric or you can use cotton fabric for all of it. You would just need to um, use some either fusible fleece or fusible foam to give the bag outer that structure if it doesn't already have it on its own. I will have a detailed list of every piece that you need and the measurements and all of that listed out on my website WhitneySews.com. The direct link to the post will be in this video's description. Start by laying the two bag outer pieces right sides together and sewing along the sides and bottom with a half inch seam allowance. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and ending of each seam. Repeat with the lining, laying the two pieces right sides together. Sew the sides and bottom, but this time leave an opening in one side for turning the bag through later. Here's how both should look. You can see the opening in the side is about the size of my forefingers. Time to box the corners. Flatten the corner so it makes a point. Line up the seam on the top and bottom and make sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions. Line a ruler up with the seam and position it so the fabric is taking up 4 inches on the ruler. Mark along the edge of the ruler. Add a couple of clips and sew directly on the marked line. Repeat for each corner of the outer and the lining. Trim off the excess on each corner, leaving about a half inch for the seam allowance. Onto the bag upper. Lay the two pieces right sides together, matching up all of the edges. Use a ruler to mark five inches up from the bottom and five inches down from the top on both sides. This will leave a one inch section in the middle. Sew from the top to the first mark, back stitch, and skip to the second mark backstitch again and sew to the other end. Do this on both sides. Open up the seam allowances on each side and give them a press so they are nice and flat. Then sew a top stitch along each side to hold the seam allowance in place. Be careful to not sew the front side to the back side while doing this. This step will help make a nicer casing for the drawstring to go into later. Fold the top piece in half so the pretty sides are on the outside. Press the folded edge with an iron and sew a line of stitching all the way around 5 8 inch from the folded edge. This forms the casing at the top with the openings on each side for adding the drawstrings. Now for the bag straps. Center a piece of fusible fleece on each strap piece so the textured side is against the back side of the fabric. Fuse in place with an iron. Use the fusible fleece as a guide to turn each long edge in by a half inch and press. And finally fold the entire piece in half and sew along both long edges. Position the straps on each side of the bag outer. I have mine 3 inches in from the side seams, but feel free to place them however close or far apart you want. Sew across each end to attach. 
grab the bag upper and place it on the bag outer so all of the raw edges are at the top and the side seams match up. Clip the layers together and sew around the top edge. I absolutely love using craft clips instead of pens. I'll have the clips and some of my other favorite sewing supplies in an Amazon link down below. Now slip the entire thing into the lining so the right sides are all together and match up the side seams. Add more of the clips and sew all the way around the top edge. Find the opening left in the side and use it to turn the entire bag right sides out. Make sure the seam allowances are tucked into the opening and sew a top stitch to close it up. Push the lining down into the bag and flip the bag top up. The seam allowances between the outer and lining should all be pointing down toward the bottom of the bag. Sew a top stitch near the edge of the bag body to give it a nice finished look and secure the seam allowances on the inside. The straps should be raised so you don't sew over them. Pick a ribbon or cord and insert it into the casing at the top of the bag. In one side and all the way around until it comes out the same opening. A safety pin makes this a lot easier. Trim the ends, sear with a lighter, and tie in a knot. Repeat with the opening on the other side. At this point you can be done, but I'm going to show how to make an insert to go into the bottom of the bag to provide a little bit of extra sturdiness. I'm going to use Basel Inner Foam Plus for this because it is a sewable, fusible foam. Um, it's actually fusible on both sides, which is really perfect for this, and it has a nice bit of structure to it, but it is still a little bit flexible and it is washable, which is always a benefit. You can find this in that Amazon link that I mentioned earlier if you want some more info on it. And if you do end up purchasing anything through that Amazon link, I do earn a small percentage and that goes to funding future Whitney Sews tutorials, which is awesome. So thank you to everyone who uses my Amazon link. It is a huge help to fund videos for projects like this. I measured the inside of my bag and it was about nine and a half by four inches. So I cut a piece of foam that was just a hair smaller than that, like just a tiny bit smaller. Then grab a piece of fabric and fold it in half. Mine was the fabric left from cutting out the bag body pieces. Line the foam up with the folded edge and trace around the foam piece. Then sew just a touch outside of the marked line to allow for the thickness of the foam. Leave an opening in the middle of the long side. Trim away any excess material and clip the corners to reduce bulk. Turn the piece right sides out and poke out those corners. Then insert the foam through the opening and make sure it is laying nice and flat inside. If the foam is too big, take it out and trim off the smallest amount at a time until it does fit flatly inside the insert. Since the foam I used is fusible on both sides, I gave the piece a press with the iron once it is in place so that it bonds with the fabric and stays perfectly in place. And Use a needle and thread to sew the opening closed with a ladder stitch. I will have a separate tutorial linked where I show up close how to sew a ladder stitch. It's the same one that I use to close up all of the memory bears that I make. Place the insert down in the bottom of the bag and you are all set to carry whatever you want inside your awesome drawstring bag. I absolutely love how this bag turned out and I cannot wait to start using it. If you give this project a try, I definitely want to see pictures of the bags you make. So make sure to tag me on Instagram or Facebook so I can see your pictures and let me know in the comments what you would carry in a bag like this or where you would carry it to. 
If you want more drawstring bag tutorials and inspiration, I have an entire playlist of them already posted here on YouTube. I'll have that playlist linked right over here to the side. And then as always, click my picture right down there to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming tutorials. And until next time, happy sewing.